At first I wasn't upset that I wasn't invited to be a part of this, but then I saw like Dan Aykroyd was there, and I'm like, I can sing. I'm, I'm like Dan Aykroyd. I'm just a guy. I could have been in The Greatest Night in Pop. But I was too. So there's that. This is on Netflix. This is a documentary. It's, uh, it's got audio description. So we're just checking things off. I'm John Stark, Mac the Movie Guy. I'm going to need you to click that subscribe button so I can tell you about The Greatest Night in Pop. Because right now, I'm sure you're like, what night was it? Was it the night that Taylor Swift won some Grammy? Or was it the night that Justin <laughs> ripped off Janet's <laughs> boob? Anyway, um, no, it's not. It's, uh, it's We Are the World. We Are the Children. It's a uh, recording of that video. And how they got all of those singers together in one room, which just sort of seems like, I love how they're like, oh, this is amazing. We got everybody. It's like, you just got everybody who was at the AMAs calm down. When you really think about it, it's just like a, a smaller version of people who were at the AMAs. <laughs> so uh, this film is, doesn't really star anybody because it's a documentary, but it's got a lot of Lionel Richie in here. So if you're a Lionel fan, um... I suppose he does the most talking because it was sort of his baby, his project, and he had to put it out there and send it out there to the world. Um, and he was tasked to do it by Quincy, who in interestingly also has a documentary about himself on Netflix. It's documentary -ception. Um <laughs> It's a documentary, then a documentary. <laughs> And uh, Michael Jackson is featured in this. Obviously, they didn't get a chance to interview him for this. So, um, although he's, there's there's some hot takes out there. The Leaving Neverland director is saying that the new biography of his whitewashes him. It's like, I don't think you're using that word correctly, but I get what you're saying because you're the director of Leaving Neverland, although I hated your documentary. So there's that. Um, and <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm glad that he still has opinions. Um, and like a bajillion, uh, other singers from, I don't know, Bette Midler, Bruce Springsteen, Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, uh, who else pops up in this? Dan Aykroyd. I just got to keep bringing that up. Um, this is so weird. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, Huey Lewis, Sheila E., um... Waylon Jennings. Um, I don't know. Were they famous in like the mid 80s? They were probably in this. So uh, it's just like a laundry list of talent. And that's why they keep like looking around the room. Tina Turner and Diana Ross, I guess, were both in this. Mm -hmm. Just like the two of them in the room together would have been like, what? What? <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and they we're writing this song. Uh, this was back in the 80s when we did a lot of things for Africa through music. We live-aided and uh, uh, we are the worlded up uh, music uh, hands across America. We did a lot of things in the 80s. This is a much more piece. I, we couldn't pull this kind of stuff off today. Somebody like would try and they'd be like, hey guys, let's get woke. Okay, we're not doing that then. Uh, <laughs> so they just... Would, wouldn't be able to do it. Somebody would say there's a conspiracy and I don't know. It's just the internet broke everything, I guess. Uh, but back then they were able to just get everybody in a room together and uh, sing a song to save Africa. Raised $80 million for Africa since its debut in uh, 1985, which really it sounds impressive, but then you're like, that's since 1985. <laughs> That it's raised. I guess it's one song that raised eighty million dollars. So I guess that's the that's the that's the thing is like what one song can do. Um. So yeah, it's uh, it's a it's an interesting documentary. I was really engaged, um, in the story about how this whole thing came to be. Uh, I was actually just engaged about knowing more about the time in which Lionel Richie was popular as a, like a star, because it, it, I feel like 
I feel like I've missed it. I feel like there was a po- there was a, a a point in time where he was like super popular, and then I came along and grew up and like I, his music in the past, right? And I'm listening to it on when my parents are controlling the radio, and uh, but he didn't really bleed over into my time period that much. A lot of these artists didn't. They weren't in. They didn't really sing in the '90s. Um, which is why, like, this is a this is 1985. You don't have Whitney Houston here, um, you know. So, yeah, it's uh, it's people who were popular for the time period. Although it's amazing, Bruce Springsteen is just still he's still going. He's just still still kicking it. Um, the man, anyway, the boss. But, uh, I, I feel like I've lost my track here. The audio description here is is really good. Um, it's, uh, it it is a documentary and it's about music. So you have people talking and you have people singing. So you have like two things that are conflicting and are taking up a lot of time in terms of where you might put audio description. However, it does a pretty good job of letting you know who's talking, um, trying to point out who's in the room uh, who who arrives? They have some footage. I guess they were because sh- they were shooting the actual music video for "We Are the World" at the same time. Um, they have some footage of that. They use footage from the AMAs that Lionel hosted. Uh, they've they've got whatever interviews they can. They got some some archival footage of Harry Belafonte that helped to kick off this whole thing. And um, yeah, I really like this documentary. Um, I, I like when I like a documentary that isn't trying to change the world, um, that isn't, those are good too. It's going to end up not being my favorite documentary of the year because I tend to lean towards something that really just kind of blew my mind the other way. Like, I think my past three have been, uh, you know, all sort of like for social change, um, and, uh, or just like this topic is really important. We have to pay attention to it. The Greatest Night in Pop is more like, yeah, this is a great period in time and it was really fun. And I'm glad I know more about it. I'm glad I have the answers to this question because I was two and I wasn't, I, I didn't get the whole We Are the World experience. I got it later on in life and didn't quite get the, you know, what it felt like to, uh, to be a part of this when it was when it was released on like apparently every radio station at the same time at like seven fifteen everywhere they've got like people who are speaking like other languages um when they when they do this launch thing so I'm guessing it was like worldwide I just I really wonder like how worldwide was it was it on like every station like every station like really did they break in on like the the metal channel, you know, <laughs> like, or the, <laughs> we're gonna rock, but first we're gonna dial it back because it's seven fifteen, and it's time for we are the world, <laughs> you, know, you know, like it's just, <laughs> um, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, this is good. I, I like the audio description, and uh, there's really not much else to say here because. You're, you're either already, like, your interest is peaked or it's not. You either want to see this or you don't. I can't, you know, I it, I can't tell you more about the plot. There's no real plot here. It's just about the event. And either that event interests you or it doesn't. So, um, it interests me. I like music documentaries also. So, um, I'm going to give The Greatest Night and Pop an A. I, I don't really have a problem with it. It didn't really do anything to piss me off. There wasn't anything where I was like, oh, I would have done that differently. I would have handled that better. Um... But the only question that I, only question that I needed more attention to is why is Dan Aykroyd here, and how did they not get him like just all up in the documentary? You know, just like it should have been like Dan Aykroyd should have been talking about this from his perspective, not Lionel. Should have been just Dan Aykroyd being like, I don't know how I got in this room, but uh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> look at all these singers around me. Why am I here? Uh, is it uh, the Blues Brothers? It's, it's kind of depressing to only have one of them, you know? It's, I don't know. It's, anyway, watch it. 
on Netflix. And thanks for watching me. And thanks for subscribing to me. I have a website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. You can go to X Threads or Instagram and follow me at MacTheMovieGuy. Uh, you can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It lets you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the admin.org. That's the ADNA.org. It'll let you know who's narrating your favorite films and television series. You can also go to walmart.com. I don't know. Just you, you can go there. This isn't sponsored by them. I just figured like I'd put another website on there just to see if anybody noticed. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, uh, this is some dirty pop, so I'm going to watch something else and see you on the other side.